everybody, my name is Gigi and you are watching Anime Palooza. It's another awesome Saturday, which means it's time for episode number nine of Super Shonen Saturdays. This week I tackled another 10 episodes of Hunter x Hunter 2011 and the shit is really hitting the fan this week, kids. Seriously, the show took a gigantic turn in episodes 41 through 50 and to be honest with you, I'm still kind of reeling from it. It's not a, wow, look at Card Guy, isn't he so badass, kind of turn either. It's a, well, let's just march right into the recap because there's not much more I can school you on. I don't think you're Hunter Hunter dummies anymore. Last I left you, Kurapika entered the workplace and wasn't wearing a three-piece suit, and Gon and Killua were on a boat like Lonely Island, just waiting to catch their first glimpse of Greed Island. Once the two of them get on land, they stop at an internet cafe. Are those even real? Or do they just exist in movies and anime? I've never seen one. There, they log on to the official Hunter website to get information about that stupid video game. The Hunter site is actually cool though, and they have to swipe their Hunter license and then they get transported into a virtual bar by way of their Nen power. They must pay to play, however, and once they pony up their cash, they get details about the auction coming up and learn that the game is super interactive. As in, the players have to use Nen, and if they die in the game, then it will stop. This is some Tron kind of shit right here, and I'm calling it right now. I think Gon's dad is trapped in the video game. Otherwise, why would this whole subplot even exist? Anyway, the kids don't even have enough cash to do the minimum bid, so they start trying to earn some money. This part is dumb. Thankfully, after a few minutes, the point of view switches back to Kara Pikachu. Yay! So, all the people in the last episode got jobs guarding this boss, who is supposedly an important figurehead in the underworld. The boss is actually a mafia daughter, who quite possibly might be my new favorite character. Whoops! Her name is Neon, and with her magical pen and her ridiculous Nen powers, she has the ability to tell the future. Without her demon-controlled pen, however, her crystal ball is always in the shop, and she can't remember what she writes down. She tells a bunch of fortunes for some underworld honchos, and they're all the same. Some shit's about to go down at the auction, and everyone's invited to die. <laughs> God, that was a bad joke even for me. Turns out she's completely on point because guess who's primed up and ready to steal every single item? No, not gone and kill so they can buy that stupid video game. It's the Phantom Troop! And guess who showed up at their reunion? <sighs> oh yeah, my boyfriend's back and you're gonna be in trouble. Speaking of reunions, it's time for Gone and Killer to hook up with Leorio! There he is! Way to keep your promise, dude. Too bad we haven't seen you for like 20 episodes, though. And he's been up to absolutely nothing besides studying for the, his doctor exam and sort of learning then. But not really. Can't do shit with his. Lupin the Third, couldn't you have done something cool like steal the Mona Lisa or something? Just so at least you could brag about it? So he decides to help the kids make money because he has nothing else going on in his sorry ass life and sets up a scam where people have the possibility of winning an expensive ring after they pay an entrance fee and defeat Gong at arm wrestling. No one has a chance in hell except for this one girl in glasses who happens to be a member of the Phantom Troop. Uh oh. She loses but instead of wrecking some havoc she just takes it in stride. Okay, whatever. Even the animators can tell this part is boring, so we jump back into the Kura Pikachu side of things, where we watch as Neon throws a fit because Daddy Dearest won't let her go to the auction because it's too dangerous and she can't get this precious mummy that she's after. She also can't see a pair of those precious scarlet eyeballs that she wants in person. Oh, if only she knew! The group of bodyguards is split up so that some members can go bid on the auction items while the others stand guard. There's some backstory about Melody in this episode too, and I can't quite decide if she's an important character or not. So if it turns out that I'm wrong and she is, I will rectify my egregious mistake in an upcoming Super Show on Saturdays episode. Egregious. It's a $2 word. ACT prep, kids. 
Now is not the time for studying though, it's time for the auction! But instead of an auctioneer who appears before Kura Pikachu's gang and hundreds of mob bosses, it's a couple of members of the Phantom Troop, one of which whose fingers turn into giant machine guns and he shoots up the entire ballroom. Oh my god, I couldn't... I, I couldn't even watch this? There was cartoon blood everywhere and absolutely no one makes it out alive. Nobody. This was the massacre to end all massacres. And when I tell you this anime takes a fucking turn, it takes a fucking turn. My stomach hurts right now just thinking about this. Seriously. I am not... I'm not kidding. This isn't fake crying that's happening right now. I thought these guys would maybe steal some jewelry and call it a day. But the Phantom Troop means business. They're fucking sick. And they just, they just don't even care. The girl with the glasses has a magical nun vacuum named Blinky who sucks up all the bodies in the blood, leaving the place like the goddamn housekeeping team just came and cleaned up the honeymoon suite. And they kill three of the Kura Pikachu gang, including my beloved high ponytail girl. She couldn't even whore her way out of this one. It just, this is really fucked up. Hunter x Hunter is not a show where people can die and then come back to life 50 episodes later either. These guys are for real dead. Fuck, I'm really depressed now. And the worst part of the whole thing is that they killed all these people for nothing because somebody stole all the auction items before the auction even started. I hate, I hate people. I hate the Phantom Troop. No wonder Kura Pikachu wants to kill them so badly. Wait a second. Just, I mean, at least Card Guy didn't have jack shit to do with this because he was chilling in the hideout with the boss, but Jesus Christ. Okay, now that I can breathe again, the Phantom Troop makes their triumphant getaway in a hot air balloon. Um, okay, what is this, the air and water show? The mafia starts to go after them, and once they are all assembled in this canyon, they shoot the biggest Phantom Troop member in the mouth. Yeah, clearly that didn't do anything, because this Uvo dude just starts fucking massacring everyone with his bare goddamn hands. And you know what the rest of the troop members do? They sit around and play fucking cards. You know what game they play? Bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. I call fucking bullshit. This episode is fucking ridiculous. So there are these people called Shadow Beasts who protect the Ten Dons of the Mafia, and now they're about to go after the Phantom Troop because they basically made them fail at their bodyguard jobs. But if you guess that the giant Uvo Beast kills them all, you win! 10 points for you! Guys, these Phantom Troop members are powerful. They do not fuck around. Meanwhile, Kurt Pikachu's gang... I really need a better name for them. How about... How about the Pokeballs? It sounds like a really horrific band name. Kerr Pikachu and the Pokeballs playing Saturday night at a dive bar near you. And that's so bad. I kind of like it. Fuck it, I'm going with it. So the Pokeballs are watching Uvo make mincemeat out of these shadow beasts when Kerr Pikachu notices the big spider tattoo on his back. And now the bloodlust is going. Hold on to your panties, girls. Uvo does end up getting some leeches inserted into his body, as well as being paralyzed, but a few little dick worms and the fact that 90% of his body can't move is not gonna stop him. Oh no, the bitch bites off some heads and uses the skull fragments to spit at people as bullets to kill the rest of the shadow beasts. I'm, I'm just fucking done. I'm done. Can I go? Once everyone is dead but Uvo, Kurt Pikachu decides he's gonna go in and get some too. But Melody stops him by playing this weird melody on a flute that calms him down. It doesn't make him stop though, it only makes him pause. He's still gonna go in there and fight the shit out of this dude. And while Uvo is reveling in the fact that he has to drink a lot of beer to piss the leeches out of his body, gross, Kura Pikachu locks that bitch up in his conjurer chains yanks him out of the canyon and stuffs him into a tiny car where he's trapped in his chain jail. And this dude can't break free. Oh yeah. Our little Pikachu, he's all he's all grown up now. All grown up and badass. And now it's time for a 10 second car chase that ends in the Phantom Troops vehicle turning into a literal clown car, shrinking to fit in a bag the size of the wristlet that I take to the bar. 
The Shadow Beast who hid all the auction items stalls the Phantom Troop long enough so that the Pokeballs can get away with Uvo. But it was all in vain because all the beasts are going to die anyway, at least as soon as he lets the Phantom Troop know where all the auction items are. Pokeballs tie Uvo up to a table while he's still paralyzed, and after he makes some empty threats and tells him that the High Ponytail Girl is dead, Kurt Pikachu punches the bitch in the face. Fuck yeah, this anime is all about face punching. I dig it. Then we cut back to my main man. No, card guy, I'm not cheating on you with Kurt Pikachu. Yet, anyway. Death by paper cut is not all that appealing to me. And he's like, peace out, Phantom Troop. I'm bored. I'm getting the fuck out of here. And let's be real, nobody really cares that he leaves because they're all terrified and awed by his awesomeness and amazingness. Okay? Okay. And it turns out he's headed to this abandoned amusement park where he's going to go meet. Okay, give it your best guess. No, it's not gone. It's not the pink haired nun surgeon girl either. It's Kurt. Pikachu? What? Really? Really? Well, now we know what Hisoka whispered in his ear during the last phase of the Hunter exam. And after sending the Pokemon a text with a cute little heart in it, he becomes king of the haunted carousel. And the two of them just jam for a while. Honestly, Card Guy is pretty much right at home amidst the broken down unicorns, and I'm totally in love with this scene. Remember how he peeled his Phantom Troop tattoo off in the shower a few episodes ago? I mean, you gotta remember, right? Who doesn't remember Soka in the shower? Well, he's only masquerading in the Phantom Troop because he wants to fight their leader, Crollo. I mean, he's getting the creeper face just thinking about beating the shit out of the dude, but he can't seem to get Crollo alone for any extended period of time. <sighs> God. Before I have another cheating-induced panic attack, let's just cut to the chase. He wants to team up with Kurt Pikachu so that if Hisoka gives Kurt Pikachu information, Kurt Pikachu can get the other Phantom Troop members out of the way so he can fight Crollo. Card Guy can get his guy on guy action with Crollo and and I just I just can't tame this savage beast. Literally. Kurt Pikachu's not taking the bait quite yet though. He wants to know what happened to the Kurta tribe's Scarlet Eyes, but that was way before Card Guy's time. He tells him a spider will not stop moving until you crush its head. I get a gross mental picture. And then Kurt Pikachu gives Card Guy half of his BF necklace and says he will see him tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Aww. See, Card Guy's charm works on absolutely anyone. You cannot deny it. And in other news, the Phantom Troop busts out Ubo because the leader of the Pokeballs is stupid enough to tell them exactly where they were hiding. And then he's so dumb, he gets killed in the process. Ugh. If you are the leader, be smart. The Pokeballs now need a new leader, and Kurt Pikachu gets nominated to take the mic and play lead guitar. His first order of business? Shutting Neon and her whiny ass up about not getting to see her damn mummy at the fucking auction. His second? Kicking some ass. Uvo wants to fight the chain guy all by himself, and he comes after Kurt Pikachu, who of course has chosen to take the Phantom Troop member on one-on-one. -on -one. In a subplot that is not at all interesting in this moment, Gon, Killua, and Leorio decide to enter the world of underground arm wrestling, which gets cancelled before it even begins so the Mafia can facilitate a manhunt for the remaining Phantom Troop members. They want them captured, and they're willing to pay for it! No one cares! Let's get back to the real story. Here is where shit gets real. Again. So remember how Kurt Pikachu had that random stranger who taught him about Nen? Well, he not only taught him about Nen, he taught him how to maximize his Nen. As in going all around the power hexagon to become a specialist. If you put conditions and rules on certain abilities, they can become even stronger. For example, Kurt Pikachu's Chain Jail is so strong because he can only use it on Phantom Troop members. If he tries to use it on anybody else, bitch gon' die. If you put a condition on a Nen power, it's just infinitely strong. So when Kurt Pikachu's eyes become scarlet and he goes into his crazy bloodless card guy mode, he becomes a specialist. And his specialist power is that he can max out any other power on the power hexagon. Basically, he's unstoppable. Now, you put 
his maxed up power with Uvo's incredible physical strength and you have one hell of a fight. It almost rivals the one between Hisoka and Gon as the best one of the series so far. On a serious note though, my current Pikachu. He used to be so cute and fluffy and now he's like this badass Phantom Troop member. I don't like Red Eyes Kurapika. He can go back to normal anytime now. Watch episode 47 to believe it. The long and short of it is that Kurapikachu puts chains around Uvo's heart and crushes it when he won't answer a question honestly. And I'm officially freaked out right now. I mean, even the side eye that card guy gives at the end of the episode, which is ridiculously hot, does not make me feel any better. Prolo's new mission for the Phantom Troop is to stop Kura Pikachu, and now the countdown is on. The next episode is really fucking stupid and switches back to the Leorio and the kids portion of the show, and just has to do with auction appraising. We meet this new character named Zebra? Zephyl? Xylophone? Who cares? All I can think about is that Leorio needs some friends his own age. I still don't buy that he claims he's a teenager. Leorio and the Get Up Kids, I'm calling them that now because you know, pretty fucking scene like that, you know, from like MySpace in 2007. Get a tip and start to tail two disguised members of the Phantom Troop, one of which is the kick-ass pink-haired girl. Nothing much of interest happens until the end, where they learn that Krollo might not want to kill Kura Pikachu, but instead recruit him. Isn't it ironic? Don't you think? It's like rain on your wedding day. Which isn't exactly ironic, it's just a horrible coincidence and I will stop singing Alanis Morissette in my head right now. And then Gone and Kill get captured and get questions about Chain Dude. Fortunately, they don't know that Kura Pikachu has these magical chains yet, so they play dumb. They get taken to the Phantom Troop's lair and yeah, they're so about to get spanked. Kill thinks the two of them are safe because Hisoka has a Jones for Gon, but then Gon almost outs him and blows the whole deal. Thankfully he outs the glasses girl instead, but she doesn't remember shit about arm wrestling him, so everyone's fine. And we'll just forget that card guy almost sliced Killua's throat with a precisely placed Joker. The guy with the ponytail offers to arm wrestle Gon, and the kid loses a whole bunch of times until he gets pissed off that the ponytail guy is crying over Uvo and just doesn't give a shit that he murdered a bunch of innocent people. He puts all his men into it and slams ponytail dude's fist down on the table. Congratulations Gon, you have now regained your title as arm wrestling champion of York New City! Ponytail guy now wants Gon to join the troop because he reminds him of Uvo and begs everyone else to let him keep the two of them hostage until Krollo comes back. Everybody else really doesn't give a shit and they all split up to go find Kura Pikachu and Killua almost rage blackouts from being kept prisoner. No Stockholm Syndrome for this dude. Luckily, Gon outsmarts the ponytail dude by playing dumb and they escape by punching through walls just like they did in the hunter exam. Everything's full circle, kids. The two of them decide they want to take on the Phantom Troop now, but they're definitely not strong enough. And instead of making my dreams come true to go back to Heaven's Arena to train so I can see who would win the goddamn tournament fighter, they decide that their best course of action would be to find Kurapika and let him train the two of them because Kill found out that Kurapika is the chain dude. All that power in our very own Pokemon. And that is the end. Oh, what a fucking roller coaster. Man, this anime that started out as a giant test, a training montage, and a tournament fighter has spiraled down into this dark place. I know my card guy is a creeper sometimes, but the shit the rest of his troop comes up with? Oh my god. I never expected Hunter x Hunter to turn into this engaging, dark anime that it's become. I'm gonna call it now, kids. Unless I get a request to hop over to another series, I'm going to complete Hunter x Hunter till the end on Super Shonen Saturdays. I'm one third of the way through and I want to see how this anime is going to end up. Once I was done with this string of episodes, all I wanted to do was watch even more. And I'm not going to deny myself that because it's my fucking show. Tune in next Saturday for Hunter x Hunter 2011 episodes 51 through 60. What do you think of the softer side of Kurapika? Yeah, that was sarcasm. Who's your favorite Phantom Troop member?
Leave your thoughts down below in a comment while I try to erase the image of a Pikachu turning into a werewolf and then eating a bunch of jokers from my brain. It's happening, people. It's happening. But until next time, I love all your brains and all your faces. <laughs> These episodes are fucking... Yeah. Just yeah. Valley Girl comes out for this shit. Let me tell you. I hope this video is not 25 minutes. I try to keep them under like... Ideally, I'd want them under 15. This is a lot of stuff. And we'll just forget about the fact that Card Guy almost slit Ahsoka's... I mean, fuck. <laughs> slit his own throat with the fucking playing cards. This is gonna be so difficult. I really need, like, a fucking teleprompter.